Hey, so first of all, it's good to see you. I, I've not seen uh, many of the water polo folks in a while. So uh, how's everything going? How are you doing? How are you dealing with all this quarantine stuff? I'm doing well. I'm staying in shape. I'm alone, which sucks, but Maggie's nearby, Cammie's nearby. So it's not a bad place to be, Seal Beach. Wish I was home. But it's been, it's not been too bad. I'm yeah, sick. yeah. What's your what's your what's your daily workout like? What are you what are you doing here to try and stay Olympic ready? So our weight coach gives us a lot of um, workouts, so I mix those up. But I've been doing a lot of Peloton, and I okay. want to get a bike now. <laughs> but I signed up for the app, and I've been doing like all the dance workouts, like all the core. Like I'm gonna have an eight pack at the end of this. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, some people have come out of this with new hobbies. They learn how to bake bread. You're going to have just sick abs. Yes, that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've tried the Peloton once or twice as well. And uh, I just feel terrible for myself because I look at the leaderboard and I'm always way down the list. So I need to actually st step my game up a little bit. You um, have a Peloton? I, 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 don't, I don't own one. I'm able to use one. So uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not that big time yet. So um, hopefully someday I can, I can have my own Peloton bike. Yeah. Um, Hey, so people have a lot of questions for you, and we'll get to those. I think a lot of the questions we get with everyone stuck out of the pool is what they can do when they don't have access to a pool. So you were talking about some of the workouts. What are, what are some of those things you're doing when you don't have pool access, but you want to stay active at home? Yeah, so I'm just trying new things. I'm trying things that I used to like that I didn't have time for. Like, I've been jump roping I've been running I've been just doing things to get my heart rate up and to train the muscles like my shoulders and my hips that I know I'm going to need to keep in shape that I'm going to need to maintain during this time but also I'm just letting myself be a little free with my training I'm not pushing myself to my limits right now I'm um <laughs> Carol <did> it. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have plenty of time for Tiger King <laughs> but yeah I'm just trying to stay consistent trying to um, understand my fitness and where I want to be for the next however many weeks the next however many months but really maintaining the fitness where I need I know I need to be strong I need to be strong in my shoulders and I need to be strong in my hips and just the rest is fitness you before uh, before the pool time stopped, you were doing your Monday kind of tips and tactics you were sharing, and, and I think people lo love those, especially goalies. When you think back on kind of as you were developing as a goalkeeper, what are what are some of those things? This is back when you had access to a pool like everyone else. What are some of those things that you were doing to get better as a goalie? So I was really with the mot Monday motivation series. I was trying to highlight some little skills and drills that anyone could do to build their foundation as a goalie and build their foundation as a player. And it's a lot of things is like, oh, just block the ball. But there are a lot of little steps that you need to take before you get there and to be able to consistently get there and understand like how your body's moving, how you should be moving across the goal. And it's, it, they're little tips and skills that I do every day to stay like, on top of my body's movement and understand how I move in the water. And I just thought I'd share that. And now outside of the water, I'm continuing to do more hand-eye coordination things and um, things like I mentioned before with my hips. And I, I'll get back into the Monday Motivation Series. It, there are stuff that I can do outside of the water that, can, that will help me to visualize being in the goal and continue to build on the skills that I try to maintain as a goalie throughout my um, training. And, and if you missed any of those, Ashley posts a lot of those as permanent posts on, on, her, on her Instagram. You can go back and watch them. Of course, you will need, you will, you will need a pool to do some of those things. Uh, as she mentioned, we're taking some questions here. If you have questions for Ashley Johnson, as you got better as a goalie, you know, whether it was something specific to being a goalkeeper or just something specific to being an important part of a team, Anything that kind of comes to mind, things that you remember doing that ended up being valuable to making yourself an important part of your team? Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things I always emphasize to young goalies and young players is connection. 
understanding your weaknesses and your strengths and understanding the strengths and weaknesses of your teammates. Like the game doesn't just happen in a bubble. You're not the only one playing. And the biggest part of our sport is that it's a team sport. You can be as good as you want and your teammates can be as good as they are, but you're only as good as your weakest link. And everyone's strong in some area, but everyone's weak in a lot of different areas. So understanding your weaknesses so that you can continue to build on those and your strengths so you can lend those to your teammates and understanding the strengths and weaknesses of your teammates as well. As a goalie, I know where my defender wants to give up, where my defender is going to give up position. They communicate that to me. When they're getting weak, I know where I can help them out shot blockers i know how to adjust them because i know where they like to block and shooters like learn shooters tendencies learn your opponents because that's going to help your game as much as it's going to hurt them everyone has tendencies everyone has um, things that they like to do and understanding that and understanding the flow of the game is going to be is something that's helped me as a goalie and as an athlete mm -hmm. You, you bring up a really good point about being part of a team. And, of course, you make some great saves. People, people love to watch the highlights. But I think you'd be the first to admit that defense in front of you often helps make you look very good. Oh, yeah. I was watching the replay of our game is going to play tonight. And I was watching uh, the shots that I blocked and the shots that I missed. And I was like, Whew, like we are, <laughs> it's really hard to score on us because we're all just we all make it so easy for each other you know like the shots that go are really really nice shots and just catch us off guard for a second and it's the same like every team with a strong defense everyone's working together every team with a strong offense everyone's working really hard together like there's so many moving pieces it's not just going to be one person who makes it all happen it's a lot of little things that happen before that moment can even work out. I'm talking with Ashley Johnson, uh, Olympic champ from Team USA. We'll take a couple of questions here. Sarah asks, what made you want to be a goalkeeper? Hi, Sarah. <laughs> I wanted to be a goalkeeper because I was competing with my sister when I was young, when we first started playing the game. I actually, it wasn't my own idea. I was copying someone. But I stayed a goalkeeper because being a goalie is the best. There you go. Just just that simple. There you go. Uh, Dakota asks, how did you get Hi, your mama. stamina so high? Uh, stamina, stamina is built over time. It's about taking repetitions. It's about not giving up when it gets hard. Even though I'm telling you, like, I fail every day. I fail all the time. I have a bike now. I'm trying to bike. <laughs> I try not to give up. I try to turn the resistance down, but it's a slow going process. So I just commit to it. You have to put in the effort over time to build stamina. How do you deal with an ambidextrous player? So I guess someone that's equally skilled right or left hand. So you don't see that very often because as players rise through uh, the levels of water polo, they start to specialize more in one dextry. <laughs> <laughs> They're single dextrous? Yeah. Yeah. So as an ambidextrous player, I think it's more important the side that they're on. So if you recognize that a player is ambidextrous and they're on the right side, you're going to treat them like they're a, and they're going to shoot, that's going to be their left-handed strong side. Strong side, you treat them like a lefty. If they're on the left side, you treat them like a righty. Like you just, it's about knowing the game, knowing the players. It's, <laughs> sorry, these questions are distracting. I know, you, ha you have to kind of block them out and then like come back to them later. I realize I don't have a good like mental capacity to block things out as a goalie. Which is, like, which is, which is, which is very <laughs> ironic given yeah. the position. Yeah. <laughs> you would think that you were good at blocking all things out. Uh-uh. No, no, I get, no, I'm just distracted all day, literally. <laughs> I think I've gotten one thing done today, and it's this call. Oh, good. Okay. Well, if, if nothing else, Productive. we uh, keep you on task. <laughs> You're just killing it today. All right. Well, we'll.
we'll we'll try and keep you on task here. Uh, Olivia asks, what are some good dry land workouts for goalies that you'd recommend? Olivia, I would recommend that you try a lot of different things and really just try to maintain your fitness. There are things that are specific to our position, like things that will train hand-eye coordination, working with tennis balls, uh, quick movement uh, training. I don't know the technical terms for it, so I'm not going to even try. No, I'm really not going to try. <laughs> but like, look up exercises, or I'll post more, maybe, <laughs> exercises to train your hand-eye coordination and train your footwork. Like, getting more light on your feet outside of the water will translate inside the water, too. Carrie asks, what's the best way to break bad goalie habits? The best way to break bad goalie habits is to practice good goalie habits. And that's the same with any habit. You don't focus on the bad, you focus on the good, and it'll settle in over time. Uh, our good friend Cherie wants to know, how are you keeping up with your family in Florida? Keeping up with my family in Florida has been hard, only <clears throat> because I can't stay on task for a long time, but I will have my mom on FaceTime all day like forget my phone in another room, <laughs> hear her <laughs> calling me like I was at home and then like come back around. But it's been, it's definitely been hard being away from family, but I've been trying to stay connected. I follow my sister on my watch on her workouts. I don't know how she burns 2000 calories a day. One <laughs> workout is like 200 calories. I'm I'm competing with her on this and I'm losing. <laughs> That's wild. So she, she claims to be burning 2000 calories in a workout? In, no, a day. Oh, a day. Okay. Yeah, wow. So she's doing like six workouts. I don't know what it is. We do the same workout and she burns like twice as many, many calories as me. If anyone has an answer to how I can burn more <laughs> calories, write it in the comments here. <laughs> Maybe she entered in her like own stats wrong, like she put down that she's five feet tall and two thousand pounds or something. But, um, no, but I didn't enter any stats. <laughs> oh, then I don't. Yeah, I, I. She's just trying to encourage you to stay on task and keep working out. That's it. Uh, Megan has a great asking. How do you handle all of this mentally during quarantine for someone at Olympic Games and now you're just on this indefinite hold? How do you handle that mentally? Great question, Megan. Um, I think it's definitely not easy having a goal that seems so set in stone. Like dealing with change is something that we practice as a team really often, but this is the thing that you're like, this is not going to change. This is the thing that's definitely going to happen. So it's definitely been a process of coping with the Olympics being postponed a year having that full schedule moved and like everything so uncertain right now. But we practice, uh, and like I, I say this a lot, but our game is a lot of mental flexibility and a lot of mental practice. And we work with a sports psychologist to understand change and mediate the effect that change like this can have on your mind and just being able to work with the moment and being able to anchor yourself in the moment and accept what you can't control. So it's definitely not easy and it takes discipline and it takes practice and I'm working on it, but it takes a lot of, you have to have ability with your mind and ability to stay in the moment while also like looking forward and understanding that you can't control everything. Yeah, that's a big concern for a lot of athletes, whether they're going for the Olympics or just back to their high school team. But there's this anxiety of, will I be ready to play again when it's time to play? Yeah. And some of that is trust. It's trust in yourself to do the preparation now. It's trust in your coach to be able to prepare you when the moment comes and the time that you guys have. But it's also like, give yourself a break, you know? However you are, you'll be ready then. You have to, don't hold yourself to the expectation of a past self. Don't like 
over anticipate who you're going to be in the future like be you now and let that be good enough excellent advice lauren asks what is your favorite type of shot to block my favorite type of shot to block is a lob why um I just think it looks pretty in pictures. <laughs> no, it's all, it's it's all about like, the gram. <laughs> Hi, Mario. <laughs> it's just like people, there's a lot of time where people think that a lob is really, really going in. And there's a lot of time where it's like, is it going to go? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I always feel bad for goalies when a lob does go in because there's that point where you're looking up and you're like, Oh no, that's that's actually going to go in now. You're like, up, oh, stop too short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is maybe one of my favorite questions from CDJ. What is your favorite sandwich at Hoagie Haven in Princeton? My favorite sandwich at Hoagie Haven is Fat Lady. What's in the Fat Lady? It has a lot of different things that I don't remember because I only get it at 3 a.m. <laughs> 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 well, we'll leave that there. I'll give you my answer that uh, the pork roll egg and cheese sandwich at, at, at Hoagie Haven is fantastic. That's a, that's a Jersey staple right there. Uh, Jersey staples. Jersey staple. Mags has a, has a good question here. You've had some different coaches. How do you deal with different styles of coaching? Um, I've definitely struggled with different styles of, stru of coaching. Um, I played, I grew up playing in Florida. I played in California on the national team. I played at Princeton and I played in Italy and Greece. And at all of those places, the coaching has been drastically different. So I find that working to keep an open mind, because I'm not very open-minded. <laughs> I, I learned a system of water polo and then I'm like, oh, this must be the right way. And Throughout my career, I've learned that there's no right way to play. There's no right, right way to coach. There's no right way to, like, learn your teammates. Everyone has their own unique journey, and being open to that just expands the way you can play, the way you can learn, and the way that you can eventually coach if that's what you want to do. But it's, it's about being open. It's about, like, actually listening and applying the skills that someone's teaching you before you decide that it's not the way that you want to play, which I've done before. <laughs> <laughs> Another question here, and this seemed a week, talking with college coaches, and Next Level asks, as a Florida native, but this really applies to most places, what, what advice would you give to players who want to stand out and be seen and recognized by college coaches? Um, that's a hard one. Uh, I think that there are a lot of different avenues that you can go with this question. I think that ODP is a great option. I think it's a good place to go and be seen and learn the skills that coach, college coaches want to see. But honestly, growing up, I didn't really have that mindset. I didn't really have the, I need to be seen. This is what I'm going to do to be seen mindset. But a lot of the people who surrounded me, like, put me in good positions to, like, be able to be ignorant and showcase my talent and just, like, have fun with the game and just be in the moment and just enjoy playing water polo, the game that I love, which was a luxury for me. And at a certain point, that did change. Like, I wanted to be able to play in college. I wanted to be seen by these coaches. I wanted all of this. But... Yeah, I would say that ODP is the path. I think that that's, like, take advantage of every opportunity that you get. Don't, like, you never know who's going to be at a game. You never know who's going to be at a pool. So just give it your all every time that you get an opportunity to. The sun's really hitting me hard, huh? Oh, yeah, watch out there. Um, interesting. So maybe uh, your your path isn't isn't the way that everyone else will go as far as making their way to college. No. Yeah. Speaking of that, you end up going from Florida to Princeton and into the national team. That's that's as you've heard many times. It's been written about a million times. Not the typical journey. When you think back on your college selection process, what was that like getting recruited, and how did you know Princeton was the right place for you? Um. 
getting recruited was an interesting process. It was a lot of newness. It was a lot of just being thrust into environments that I'd never been in before and having to like decide whether the school was right for me, decide whether I wanted to be here, like different coaches, different uh, players, different people, like a college environment that was super intimidating. But um, one of my good friends growing up went to Princeton with me and she showed me around campus and just took me through it and it just it felt like home like everything about it felt like where i was supposed to be and i know that i think that anywhere anyone goes is going to like fulfill that expectation like every college is going to be a great experience for the person who chooses it but i just i felt it and it felt right when i was there so i went just that simple. <laughs> Ashley Johnson, women's national team, Olympian. Lots of questions coming in here. Very, very popular, Ashley, not to inflate your ego, but a lot of people want to get Too advice late. from you. <laughs> Too late. It's already off the charts. Lauren, <laughs> another good question. What are your plans after water polo? My plans after water polo. So I don't know when water polo is over yet. And even if I did, that might change. But um, I want to start a learn to swim program for uh, children of color to access the opportunities that I got the opportunity to access through aquatics. So teach people of color to swim. And from there, <laughs> the world's my oyster. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. A few people, more than a few, have referred to you in the comments here as an inspiration, a role model, all, all those sorts of things. When you see that sort of stuff, do you say like, oh, that, and that's not me? Or like, how, how have you embraced that sort of role, whether you wanted it or not? I know now you've kind of come into it, but I think a couple of years ago, right, it was a bit of an adjustment for you. Yeah, it was definitely an adjustment. And really, it's it's interesting because as I've grown through the sport, it's gone from being someone who people tell me who I'm going to be and who I should be to like really getting to own that space and understanding who I am and who I want to be. And being a role model, it used to seem like this huge responsibility, such an intimidating uh such an intimidating title to put on someone but now it seems like a a cool responsibility you know it seems like something that i can actually i can take ownership of and i can lead i can lead by just being myself it doesn't i don't have to do anything extra than what i want to do than what i've been doing like i I'm, I'm just being the best version of me that I can and I'm working hard and I'm failing and I'm succeeding and I'm doing it all and that's enough and that just it goes back to like giving yourself a break like the things that you are or the things that you're coming into and realizing about yourself don't have to be these like huge things you know you can just be yourself and that's enough and that's that's really great. <laughs> what what comment did you just read? I just read, Arigato Domo. You're super dope. My daughter wants to be in the water like she watched you. Yeah, exactly, right? It's like, it's the, it's the, it's the things you were just talking about, right? Whether, whether you knew it or not, you become a role model. And now a lot of people want to be like you. I know you've embraced this, this, position and also has, as it has to do with your race in water polo being being a minority being a history maker a trailblazer at the olympic level that's really gotten interwoven into all of your stats and your awards how do you feel about those things kind of merging together where when people do mention you they of course talk about how great you are in the pool but that race thing comes with it now i mean it's all part of my identity it's all part of who i am as an athlete and it's also important for who I am as a role model. Like being able to break these barriers, being able to set these examples, being able to be who I am and be successful and have people recognize that my race is part of that. It's just, I feel 
like it's a really cool opportunity to open the doors in our sport that is historically white and historically like not that open to people of color and just prove that people of color deserve to be in the sport they should be in the sport they need to try it they can succeed in it and i don't know i just i want to bring more people of color into our sport i think it's there's so much opportunity here and it's just really really great <laughs> we're talking with ashley johnson from the women's national team a couple of questions in here we've already covered so make sure you go back and watch this from the top after we're done and you can get some information there on how Ashley got involved and her kind of path to Princeton and all that good stuff. And a lot of love for Florida here. We talked with University of Florida Ooh, club yeah. coach, Katie, Katie Larson earlier, which by the way, there is a spot for you on the Florida club team. If you want to go back and get your masters and become a Florida Gator, they're happy to have you on the club team. So. <laughs> My brother's a Gator. Oh, is he? All right. There you go. Yeah. William. The, the, the Florida Gator, the Princeton Tiger, all merging together. A lot of people like to know things like toughest shooter you ever faced, things like that. Who's, you know, outside of your own team, who are some of the hardest shooters you've ever had to go against? Um, I feel like the toughest shooters I faced haven't necessarily been the best shooters in other people's minds. Like, everyone has weaknesses and my weakness is like tricky shots like not i love a good like hard direct to the corner shot you know but when yeah. your shot looks like <laughs> <laughs> throws me off <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm jumping at every point in your release yeah i think that people with tricky fakes people who like if you look away from the goal that'll get me <laughs> If you're like, oh, bird. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the key. If anyone's wondering on how to score an Ashley Johnson, try and distract her or look as if you're a terrible player. Yes. <laughs> perfect, perfect. That reminds me of when I would play pickup basketball against people that were much better than me, and they would fall for very <laughs> basic moves because they were like, this person is highly unathletic. There's no way they're going to go around me. And so if you just give like one of those old man fakes, they would jump <laughs> from the block. You've got and just game. Easy. Exactly. No no one's ready for it. Because you're just no moving so slow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, that that is classic. We'll take a few more questions here for Ashley Johnson. I, I'm curious about the mental advantage that you get from the goalkeeping position. I, I can remember more than one game where you would make a lot of stops in the first quarter, and now people are thinking twice. And as the game goes along, not that they're not trying to score, but you see them pass that ball around the perimeter, and nobody wants to be the one to shoot on you now because you've blocked all their shots early. Is that something you notice, and how do you kind of feed off of that and the defense feeds off of that? Yeah, I mean, it's all part of the flow of the game. I definitely notice it. It's definitely palpable when someone – is shooting a lot, taking a lot of chances, and then just suddenly, like, realizes those chances aren't paying off and isn't willing, I can, like, see it in their eyes, isn't willing to take yeah. those ch chances anymore, isn't willing to, and it goes back to, like, being willing to fail. Like, isn't willing to fail anymore. And that speaks to our defense at the time. It speaks to, like, being mentally flexible if I miss a ton of blocks in a the game, there is a point where it can get me down. But I've really focused on not allowing those moments to be like decisive moments for me to like turn off in games or like give up. I, I think part of my strength, my strength as a goalie is that I can let go of those moments. I'm not going to let myself get too high and I'm not going to let myself get too low. I'll definitely feed off of that momentum and gain strength from my um, my defense making blocks, my shooter shooting and scoring, or like taking risky sh attempts, even if they miss, like getting that energy in games. But I really try not to like get sucked into the flow of the game because that's not something that I have control over. That's not something that is gonna 
always lend itself positively to my game. So if I can, I'll get my energy from within, I'll get my motivation from within, and I'll like, I'll try to stay in the moment and focus on the next block, the next pass, the next communication, the next thing I need to say to make a play happen. Uh, just a heads up, Sister Chelsea has taken a pause from her 2000 calorie workout to join the chat. Chelsea, I was telling you you burn 2,000 calories a day, and it's just not easy to keep up. How do you do it? (laughs) I have another goalie question for you. Okay. So you talked about in the video from Rio when you were kind of giving your thoughts on that on the video that got posted today. You were watching a pass. Kylie passes to Cammy and scores. And you said how much you love that play. You weren't even part of it. And I'm curious, as a goalkeeper, how important is it for goalies to stay engaged and be supportive even when you're several meters away from the good stuff? So um, a lot of you know, watching my games, that I talk most of the game. I'm, like, yelling at the shot clock. I'm communicating where the ball is on the perimeter. I'm, like, cheering for for my teammates. I'm doing everything to to stay engaged. When I first got on this team and when I was younger, one of my biggest problems is that I would completely zone out when the ball <laughs> left, <laughs> like when it left my side of the court. And it would just, I, attention was a big thing that I needed to work on. Attention was a big thing that needed to, that I needed to work on to stay anchored in the game. And yeah, watching that moment yesterday was like, like made my heart race like I saw them practice that so many times and get so frustrated that they couldn't get it and then when it finally clicked it was just like like magical it was crazy that's very cool well Ashley uh, this has been great appreciate you taking some time here to offer some tips and tactics and all that stuff and I, I know everyone's looking forward to seeing your Monday skills videos come back very soon Okay, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> you, should, you should definitely do it. I think you have some free time on your hands. There's no reason you shouldn't. Greg, I get one thing done a day. <laughs> one thing. So what do you do with, the, what, with, with the other hours of the day? Are you watching shows? Like, what are you doing to stay busy? I'm making to-do lists. <laughs> to-do lists. There has to be a show or a podcast, something that you're binge watching or listening. Oh, you know what I'm listening to right now? No. I'm listening to Invisibilia. What is that? It's a podcast. It's a psychology podcast. It's really good. Okay. All right. I listen to so that's your, that's your podcast. And I'm watching oh, okay. Community. Community. Yeah, not- I laugh out loud. Like I'm laughing for hours, distracting myself from my to-do lists. Uh, you know, we, we have to get back to Tiger King real quick since Chris Morinello brought it up way in the beginning. And as a Florida native, part of that was in Florida. Did you did you watch the whole series? What's your what's your take? Did you ever own a tiger? I think I stopped two episodes before the end. But oh my gosh, people are crazy. I I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like I didn't sympathize with anyone in the show. But I was kind of like, huh, <laughs> like, this guy's kind of charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, look, he definitely commands attention. He definitely does. And I was like, his songs, like that voice, it's kind of captivating. <laughs> is, is there a person on your team that has like a Joe Exotic vibe? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> Let me think. No, no one. No. I know some people who have a Carol Baskin vibe. Oh, yeah? <laughs> but I'm not going to say it right now. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> um, let's see if we got any other questions in here before we let you go. How much do you use your quad muscles? In... My base position is all quads. Let me tell all you. All quads. La, la, Kazan. <laughs> uh, what? Let's see. One more here. Oh, Eva has some thoughts about Tiger King. They are all horrible people. I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, I can't say this name, but the person asks, 
what do you believe are the three most important things for a young goalie to get down first? I would say the one most important thing is fundamentals. Like understanding your body, how you move, understanding your positioning in the cage, and just getting that reaction to the ball, getting that timing right. But yeah, it all starts with fundamentals. Uh, who's a bigger deal in Miami, Pitbull or Dwayne Wade? Pitbull. Like easy? easy. Give me a hard question. <laughs> uh, did you buy those 305 sneakers yet? Not yet, but I need to. Send me a link. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, I'll try and find those. There's some custom 305 uh, Nikes that Ashley's all about. So, oh, oh, I know. Last question. Someone commented, why were you wearing different sneakers than everyone else on the podium? <laughs> I was hoping no one would notice. So I, <laughs> I get made fun of literally, I would say once a week about forgetting my <laughs> – my podium sneakers. I, I'm super forgetful, but this is the one time where I needed my memory to, like, come through for me, and it didn't. <laughs> but I left my podium. We get a kit of podium gear in the event that we win the game that we're going to wear. No, in the event, we would have worn it anyways. But <laughs> we get a kit of podium gear to wear on the podium. If you get a top three place, you wear it. And I forgot the shoes. So I wore the shoes that I warmed up in onto the podium and looked like an idiot. But someone on Instagram <laughs> Someone someone tried to cover for you and say that you just have bigger feet than everyone else and so you needed special shoes. <laughs> yeah, I, I need special shoes. <laughs> that's not the case. <laughs> that's it. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, Ashley, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for making this the one thing you did today. Thank you for making my to-do. I just crossed off my entire to-do list. You're yeah. done. You can call it a night. <laughs> Good night. All right. We'll see you, Ashley. Take care. Bye, Greg.